The car I'm driving was built a decade ago, though it seems older than that. Like it was born in the early 1990s. The steering wheel is coated in crinkled black leather, there's a throwback six-speed manual shifter and old-school analog dials. There are no digital screens whatsoever. Certainly no NAV system, but it does have a tape player. This is the last supercar that Acura ever produced, a 2005 model year NSX. And it is awesome. This particular specimen comes from Acura's own fleet, with 45,510 miles showing on the odometer. It's painted deep silver. It's also a convertible of sorts, with a roof panel that pops off and is manually stored in the small trunk. I'm somewhere in California Sonoma County, on back roads. My cell phone is dead, and I'm deeply lost. I don't care. The top is off, and the 3.2-liter V6 is keening behind my head. I'm intentionally holding either second or third gear so that the RPMs spike to 8,000, right at the beginning of the red line. The resulting sound is fresh, vibrant. None of this is absolutely new. Similar thinking can be found in the lovely and lovable BMW i8, the McLaren P1 supercar, and the LaFerrari. But it takes years to develop a car, so it is fascinating that so many companies were pursuing similar strategies. The NSX is way faster than the i8, which makes no claims to be a supercar. But in some ways the experience of driving the i8 is more similar to that of the old NSX. The i8 feels small and toy-like, and you can drive it at every ounce of its potential on a real mountain road just like that 2005 model. It costs $140,000, and makes an approachable 357 horsepower. I'd own the i8 in a hot second, too. Both the i8 and NSX are cerebral cars. I can imagine long conversations about either with the kinds of technology lovers who aren't interested in cars at all. If you like mechanical things, or even just digital things, these new age machines will hold some fascination. There's a difference between the i8 and the NSX, though. The i8 is entertaining, but I could take a passenger out in the NSX and scare the hell out of them. Because once you get past 130 miles per hour which the NSX does easily and happily things get real. I went a lot faster than that on a racetrack, and the NSX proved that it can handle, and stop, at amazing speeds, confidently and surely. And that's the province of a supercar, even one as gentle and kind as the NSX. So, would you drop a pile of big bills for the NSX if you could? It depends, do you like to think about your car, or simply drive the hell out of it, or both?